Complexity taking on G2 now live from London. It's the Face It Major, the Legends stage indeed. Legends have been made. Complexity, hard work pays off as they're on a bit of a win spree. Four wins back to back through the Challenger stage and of course their opening gambit in the Legends. They're locked in for the next Major, that's one thing. Now, can they do damage at this one? They want to go ahead and get deaf in front of that home crowd. Of course, one of the two UK players who are making history by getting to this stage of the Major for the very first time. But standing in their way is G2 and a team that actually our analysts we don't know too much about. Introductions first, Chad Sponge Birchill and Bjorn Threat Purse joining me, of course, the brains behind this brigade. And gentlemen, I'm hoping you can help me out here because I'm starting to truly believe in this complexity project. The results so far, I admit, the question is, have they been tested? Like I'm looking at their results threat and I'll read them to you. Fnatic, a great win, 16-4 from Complexity. Then it's Vega, Big and Space Soldiers where Complexity managed to get themselves their big wins in the Challenger stage. Do you consider them t fully tested yet? All on one map as well. I was just going to say, they've only played Inferno thus far and we were talking before this that it actually doesn't mean that much. The only thing we know is that they can play Inferno. I mean, they might even be better on other, other maps. Yeah, I mean, I guess that that's another way to go, Chad, is it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing yeah. that we've only seen Inferno. Sure, it's good for them, but everyone's giving it to them. With this format, you can only play who's in front of you, right? So the fact of the matter is, if you think they deserve to be here or not, they've only beaten the teams that have been placed in front of them. And fact of the matter is, if you're going to keep giving them Inferno and you're going to allow them to play a map that they've proven they're comfortable on and you lose, well, then that's your own fault. We're getting to this point in the matter where in the best of ones, sure, if you win both pistols, sure, if you win a lucky clutch here, they're everywhere. It could go in either in either form. But Inferno is one of those maps where if you're going to let it through and you start on the T side and you're able to get control of the economy, you can win it. I think we were discussing this as why we think Inferno's cropped up so much. And that's because no one is the best team in the world on Inferno. There's no one who stands out head and shoulders above the rest. I feel like there are a lot of teams who could beat one another and games are so close on that map that it's probably why teams are allowing it to come through consistently. I don't think that's going to be the case this time I around. thought we were calling Astralis the best team in the world on Inferno. No one is. If well, if if no one is best on the map, it's going to be the best team in the world that's going to be best. Ah, touche. But touché. no one stands out. No yeah. one in my mind is, uh, is, is going to have a clear-cut victory on their map all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, clear-cut victory for some of us on uh, the talent prediction side of things oh, here we as go. well, gentlemen. We have got an update of those scores. We started them at the start of the day, of course, or well, we took stock at the start of the day, and oh, I've <sighs> slipped. We've got a smug DDK and Anders, the two people who put less thought into their predictions than they do into their breakfast. And uh, outside of that, okay, 75. So me, Henry, and James are just nipping at their heels. How am I so low? Yeah, Chad, look how <laughs> grumpy you look. I've Which got every prediction correct today. Which one did you miss yesterday? Yesterday, you I got think really I picked. I think I picked Mouse Sports over a, a, NIP. Uh, NIP, yeah. Uh, no, everyone picked NIP. Yeah, but I had to do mine privately because I wasn't on the desk then. Uh, so that let me down. That one choice in a game where it was 50-50. That's ridiculous. Well, Maybe I mean, that's why I look so la sad in that caricature. You do, you do. I look like I've just been working for 24 hours at some do, desk Chad, job that yeah. I hate. Wait, that's how I always look? I mean, no, as in that was that is exactly how you look after those predictions. Oh, yeah. I don't mind to go outside a bit more. Get yeah, a bit get of, some fresh air, know. get that tan back. I'm feeling old. I didn't realize I was looking old as well. Oh, yeah. He, has a, he used to have a fantastic plumber's tan. Yeah. I used to love that. I met him in Calavitza. He was, had his surf boy hair and his plumber's tan. Now he's just a gamer like look all of us. Now. What have we done to him? Anyway, Counter-Strike is continuing, and I want to start focusing on one team. Which, to one, which one am I fancying? Magical voice in my head. You said one, and I was distracted by our predictions. Or you can just show me. Complexity, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, this is the team that have got the firepower. Sean Gares was singing the praises of the individuals of Complexity last time I probed him about this roster, and I think it's easy to see why, Chad. What did you use to probe him with? Uh, I asked him a question. Oh, and they're usually the best way to get the right answers. But I look at this squad, and I think <laughs> it's not the stars of North America by any means. They're not the ones who I look to and go, yeah, these guys are going to lead uh, the, the region to a trophy. But the individuals within this tournament and the way that they are playing together with each other is very impressive. They've shown that they have poise in a lot of situations. Individuals are able to stand up and win big clutches. And I guess that's all that matters to get them to this point. Yeah. I think Stanislav is the man to point out in this team. Uh, the old Optic lineup, I think it was in the end of 2016, they were nobodies. And he just brought that team to the top. They even won the E League. Um, yeah. Not the major, but the, the E League Premier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a weird final for them to win. That was that's when NAF was still on the team, and everybody had their own sporadic moments. And it's kind of a similar thing that's happened with complexity here. I, 
I struggle to look at these guys and it's not, not take them seriously, but in the sense of coming up against tougher opponents, it's so difficult to see their win condition because games have been close for them in, in certain regards. It has been uh, these moments where we did have that yay 1v4 situation Gorgeous, like, yeah. earlier in the in the challenger stage. There are bits and pieces like that that have helped them get through. Like yesterday when they played Fnatic, Fnatic, Fnatic were very flat. Now, yeah. that kind of game shows more, talks more about Fnatic than it does about complexity. And of course, just to the right uh, on the screen of Stannis Law is going to be Ye, the man who Chad was uh, impressed with some of his individual plays. And he gave a real interesting interview yesterday with Parler, just shedding light on the fact that he feels like he is proving a lot of those at home and those that doubted him wrong. And I think, you know what, when you, you come to the international stage, you come to the very best of the best, you get through that challenger stage, you weather that storm and you one of the youngest players at the tournament, your first major. I'm sure there's a lot of things going on for Ye outside of the server that really can both contribute and hinder to his success. And it's interesting to look at their map statistics the past three months. Inferno actually isn't their highest map. It's actually Mirage, and I wouldn't be surprised if G2 lets Mirage go through in this match. Ooh, okay, we're talking vetoes already. First, we're talking of G2, let's bring them up. This is a roster like no other. Kenny S, Body, Shocks, Smiths, and Existence. The G2 project fell flat, and they decided to reach back in to that uh, magic hat of French players and see what they could do with this one. It is quite the combo. Shocks and Kenny, of course, we know they hit hard as a unit. But this new spice of existence, a storied in-game leader coming back to the fray and bringing Smiths out of the coaching position back into the server after, actually, I think he made it public that a lot of the reasons he stepped away was for the criticisms he received from the community. He was chewed up and spat out by the community for his in-game absence of prowess. Well, we've all been there. Uh, look, you know, the community can be very tough in those situations, and unfortunately it does actually influence roster changes. But right now, the makeup of this team is clear. you got Shox and Kenny as the two stars of the squad. And yesterday, when they beat Hellraisers, they both played like stars. Now, that's a fantastic sign of things. They also had different takes on Dust2 of the way that they actually wanted to approach their CT side. I thought we saw some cool new innovation or different ways to deal with long control. So there's lots of positives to take, but it's just a small sample size with G2. It was interesting that they decided to put Smiths and Existence on the same site. I want to see if yeah. they do that on different <laughs> maps today. We really need them to avoid that. I think the cool thing with Dust2 is you can call so many different dynamic CT setups where you can cheat players around. On certain maps, though, where the rotation time is a lot longer or there's more pressure to at least get one or two kills and trade out efficiently, like Inferno for those post plants, they need to make sure that their, their star power is a little bit more spread. So when you're looking at this kind of setup, a map like Cache and Mirage, where you can be very active on your CT setups, could be where I would be looking for strengths for that of G2. Their T side should always be good. Their default should be down pat. They should be able to have a couple of cool gimmicky strategies that they can play off of and hopefully snowball the economy. The question mark just is really, when will we see Existence and Smith step up on the scoreboard? Because they need to contribute if they want to beat bigger opponents. Speaking of Existence, he features in our head-to-head. -head. It's brought to you by The Predator, which is in cinema September 14th. This is the two in-game leaders, and I do love this conversation because gone are the days where you can be an in-game leader and claim that that is a good and viable excuse for underperforming in the fragging department. We do seem to have kind of moved past that. You have to pull your weight now as an in-game leader, and I think both of these at times have shown they truly can. Stan, the man, top of the scoreboard in their last win, and uh, existence, he used to have some crazy games in for LDLC. I mean, we have Angel, we have JR in Vegas Corners. There's plenty of of IGLs today that can also deliver on the individual level and existence hasn't really impressed me thus far since he's got he got back into G2 and it, if it goes to a map like Inferno like you talked about Chad it's gonna be really dangerous to put him on let's say B and he just has one individual bad play it would just cost them the site and that's basically the round. I, I think the G2 have to respect Ban Inferno if they don't at this point then it's just disappointing that nobody is giving complexity the credit they're due on that map the fact that they've done it time and time again would be more than enough reason for Bye -bye me to does remove too. that. Okay makes sense. I think that we probably will be seeing G2 get rid of Train of course I think Inferno needs to go as well uh, Nuke is on the cusp of the map, and then it's either going to be, I think, Nuke and Cache is the last two, Ooh. well, then it has to so be. So Nuke's still around. G2 should float. This Nuke's could be going. Inferno again. They must ban Inferno here, because Complexity okay. will get a choice. Yeah, so now Complexity get the choice between Cache and Nuke, and they're going to lean definitely towards Cache. And that is one of the maps where hopefully on the CT side, Existence has a couple of pocket rounds where they can push their stars around to, to dictate, because this is normally a North American playground, historically so, a map where, you know, that's all they play in Pug. So quite proficient individually, and they've got all those little tricks under their sleeve, but 
Yeah, I, I would just wanted to state as well that what the French scene has been li missing for some time has been a clear, strong leader. Existence coming back to that role, he is a very strong leader. I think we've all seen his fiery speeches and all that kind of stuff he used to give back in the day. And this means that the players can have more structure. And that's something that Kenny in the past has said that he would like to have, and he feels he plays better under structure. I want to point out that there's no data on D2 and Cash either. They haven't played it a single time in the past three months. Yeah, they have just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, locked themselves in a basement somewhere and grinded, ready to come out for this major and make a dent, make an impact, because they knew they were starting from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. New in-game leader comes in, you've got Smith's back in the server. You have to just adjust, and that ta process takes time. Three months, no cash. And now I need to see who you think is going to be taking this one. A clash on cash, Chad. What are you calling it? I, I want to lean towards G2. The one thing that I don't want to see is them just running the mid wall smoke or the four A smoke execute that they invented three years ago. I need to see something new. I'm going to go with G2 purely because of the star power, and it's the logical choice. Okay, and of course our casters are joining us as well, James and Dan. Gents, this is the first time we're seeing Complexity not play Inferno here at the Major. Does that influence your decision at all? Ooh, it's definitely uh, an important factor, I think. But I, again, we don't have much knowledge about G2, except what we know about existence in the past. And also the fact that we know their preparation for this tournament has been pretty impressive. And sure. if we see like some of what, because existence was an innovator on this map. A lot of great set pieces, a lot of amazing T sides. Also, as I mean, James is probably going to talk about CT grenades for quite some time <laughs> as far as existence is concerned. So for me, I just have to go towards existence and G2 really with this. Siding with experience, James. Yeah. French teams on cash, man. Never bet against <laughs> oh, French man. teams on cash. Don't ask him why, because be he can't G2. actually answer that question. It's French teams on cash, there's too so much he, space. He just repeat the there's same too thing. much space and there's too much again, aiming. Again. Right? You, got, you don't you oh. do not do French teams in cash. All right, I love yeah. you two. That's two <laughs> for G2, like the married couple that they are, Bardolf and DDK. Uh, what have you got for me? I have to go with G2. I just think uh, Kenes is going to just be able to play that dynamic CT opposition, so. Oh, man. I wanted to go for complexity, but now I'm going to... Do it. I'm, oh, okay, I'm being told I wouldn't be alone. Henry, Sadikis, and Moses did it, so I'm going to join the, the brigade. I didn't want to be the only outlier because I'm kind of in the front, kind of like leading the pack here uh, in the prediction game, and that's obviously what this is all about. But no, jokes aside, can Complexity to take this one? I just want to see more from Complexity. I want to see what the how deep their map pool goes, and G2 is a, it's an opponent that struggled in their first game versus Hellraisers despite the win. Gentlemen, I think we're going to leave it there, and we're going to love and leave you with the best Counter-Strike you can offer. Awesome. I just, James, I'm really hyped for this one. I think this could be really fun and very interesting. What's exciting is we don't know at this point how good this complexity team is. And that's more of a positive than a negative in terms of the journey of discovery. Now, the same could be said for G2 as well, the return of existence. Again, um, he is uh, somebody I watch a lot of demos on, on Cash specifically, um, which we'll get into later as we kick things off, as mentioned on the desk. We want to see new things, not just the old things, and I'm sure that we will. So it's, it's a very hard one to predict. Let us know who you think will win upcomer.com. Check out the app on iOS and Android app stores and make your predictions known. And I think, ooh, lots of, I mean, there is a huge GT a fan, fan base. base yeah. And I mean, Complexity as well. I think they're really reconstructing their fan base. I think, I think North American Counter-Strike, James, it is, it's, a, it's starting to sort of, surprise people because I don't think at this point people really respect how much overall the scene is improving and with some of the the teams you have in that region like the very good teams you know Cloud9 for a, a period you've got MIBR and that's you know previously SK and that core you've got Team Liquid that trickle down it's really having an impact and I don't know if we can really count complexity out so oh it's impossible to know no, absolutely. We should not count anybody else in this. Um, that is for show. Sure. All right, here we go. G2 yes. will be starting on the CT side. I think it will be... I can't wait to see Shocks with an AK. That's 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 one thing. Shocks and Body on AK-47s, I think, are going to be really awesome as well. In terms of fragging power, I think it, it's a reasonable argument to say that this is not quite a G2 of old as far as the AKs are concerned. So I think the French teams were can on cash thing would be even more apparent with the likes of NBK and Apex here, but unfortunately for them, they're not. So anyway, we'll see what uh, complexity can do. They will start on the T side. And it's just going to be straight into the B-bomb site, it seems. 
Well, goodbye, good night. Stanislaw body turning up for the first frag, and now Shox is on the rotation. Existence trying to create some spaces, some distraction, ply away Android from this choke point, but it's not quite working out as he wants. Bomb will be planted in G2. Do they have any utility really here? Existence has an incendiary. I don't know if there's a lineup or any kind of retake incendiary that he has in his mind to help out this situation. We'll have to see. He might get tossed into the back of the bomb site here. Push the A out of position. Indeed, he's into the open. Oh, that is a great way to come out into the open. This frags Existence. We'll get traded out there as the CTs push onto the site. Bomb continues to tick. Shocks is the one with a kit, but there are too many players alive. And this is going to be a problem. There's just there's just too many men. They've got to push the uh, the checkers position, but they don't have the time to go there and come back. And that's going to be a round four complexity. Maybe taking G2 off guard because you just don't expect just a rush B essentially, and uh, that managed to work out for complexity. Now there are retake smokes you can do to make your life a hell of a lot easier um, on the pistol rounds. I forget what team it was, but I did make a video of um, a retake. If you have one smoke, I think people should on the B bomb site because um, when a bomb is planted for checkers in that position, you only need to smoke out one of the two places. So you, they have to go really deep and be completely exposed to stop you from trying to defuse the bomb. You can throw it from lower and higher, but more about that later. We did see a fantastic pop flash from existence in the vent actually, which just drips through. So that's one to, uh, to learn as well. And that's only round number one there. And one thing I'm excited about is is Shocks, I was going to say, and seeing whether he'll be anchoring that A side at all in this matchup. He is disgusting when it comes to playing these like 1vx situations around boxes, but... Oh, it's getting bad here for Complexity. They may have to go for the Desperation push. Lost two players already. They will be able to gain position, though. They'll buy position with the lives of a couple of players, and that's fine. Shocks, though, now out there with the Deagle looking for the angle. The head spotted, and he will be swatted as well. Beautiful from Shocks, but still, two players to go. Can they really do this? Kenny and Shocks, the two stars of the team against Ye and Android here, lying in wait with the AKs. Ye with a very good position. Kenny S is going to go down. Shocks has information, but he'll no longer have his head. Ye will close it down, but that was scary, James. That's a, a shot across the bow. Those are warning shots. Indeed, they are. Yeah, that's a very good uh, description, Dan. They are warning shots. Firing. I actually watched some videos um, of people defending boats from Somali terrorists. And it's it's right. insane on on the YouTube, but as you do, that's actually quite um, quite the segue. So let's just go back into Counter Strike, shall we? G <laughs> two, <laughs> G two on a pistol. Just when you said across the bow, I was just thinking, it just reminded me of that. Anyway, we've got Desert Eagles out again for G two on the likes of Shocks and Existence. And this is just a warm up. This is just a warm up. Android is not best equipped for a long range engagement with the Mac ten. Now down to twenty eight HP. He has to wonder if he has become bait. Will the CTs chase him down? You can see Death and Stanislaw are holding angles to support Android and keep him alive. Perhaps expecting the CTs to move in towards mid and take him out, which would make the round easier for complexity, but G2 will take no such bait. Yeah, just running that anti eco here, complexity. That's one thing to note, you know, what the drills are like on this map for them. How clean it can look. They definitely need to clean around after the previous one, as Shox has the Eagle again. Although he's not getting any early kills as he did previously. Body will though with that USP. And that's definitely a good start. And things are looking a bit labored. And G2 are using this time to reposition with the pistols. And maybe things could get a bit more awkward here. Complexity will be on the bomb side and holding off these choke points. So things aren't looking too bad. I wonder if Android hates the fact that Game of Thrones is a thing, James. His name being Bradley Fodor. Because probably every time he says that, people are like, oh, is that like Hodor? That's probably very annoying. Well, you can mess with it and say like Fodor. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that could be a good way around it. Just, yeah, just pretend to be very up. posh. Yeah, that's, that's that's good. It's creative thinking, James. Out of the box, you're out of the box. F Oda. Okay, now you're back. Now, now you're very far away from the box, James. Too far away. The box <laughs> can no longer be seen. Three zero for complexity. That's the start they wanted. Getting best of ones. The pistols will be even more crucial. Ken, yes, on the AWP, and he's naked. He's in the nude, as you can often find French people on a beach. Naked nudist. He will be very far away, though, so he won't be as susceptible to grenades depending on where he chooses to engage from. So this is this is uh, a common issue on the second round of cash for a CT side. You can see the limitation in grenades. If you go for that force buy round number two, it really leaves you ill-equipped to um, have all the control you might otherwise have liked to have. 
And looking at Stanislaw's lineup, as depicted by Monsieur Sliggy, showing us the build-up of the round, this may show some intentions as to what complexity have in mind. Where is that smoke going? It seems we may soon find out. Again, the timing of complexity here may just take G2 completely by surprise while they're trying to set up for a boost. They've got two people just stuck in this position, including the AWP, but Kenny saw that manager just lands a shot, trades all over the place, but the sight is with complexity. It's, yeah, it's, oh, that could have been really bad. It's, but they do go 3v3 here, so this is salvageable when G2, despite the awkwardness of that situation, flashes over the top here to get CTs close to the bomb side. As we do get the plant, it's fresh. There's time here for the CTs. They have a kid on body as well as a smoke, so that smoke could be used to, again, close the distance even more. And Complexity don't have any smokes to throw to deny G2 forward positioning, so there's a real chance here now as G2 start to move forwards. Can they make this work? Stanislaw. Be, oh, Ooh, that is beautiful. fantastic. Great flick coming in from Stan and body. This may be too difficult indeed. He'll be closed down. Stan does the damage. Really nice. Good attempt there from, from body. Visualizing the trade frag. And if the player in main and peaked, he probably would have just got taken out by that pre-fire from body. But um, the second frag is so important here for Stanislaw. Really, really important. Great flick from him. And what, what, what I think we have seen so far in these very, very early rounds from Complexity is they're probably expecting a more cerebral approach from G2, some time to set things up. As it used to be telegraphed uh, before the existence level teams broke up on their T side, especially on catch, where they'd be setting up behind the smoke and you see somebody flank and just wipe everybody out. It seems like Complexity are going for fast plays before G2 can get into the comfortable positions which they want to, choose, they want to engage with. And it seems here we go for another fast round. Molotov's all over the A site, and the whole team are here. A bit of damage from Kenny. So, ooh, there's some more damage coming in onto these complexity players, but no frags yet. That said, Kenny just finds a headshot onto Shazam. Kenny gets the AWP as well, but he can't get the shot off to keep himself alive. But Shocks in a forward position. He'll be shut down off the trade. And G2 always dangerous, it seems, although Complexity will get the round regardless. Yeah, that was interesting. Complexity had Shazam by the forklift position on his own, which is great. He's got the range of the AWP towards the car position. But if people are close to the smoke already, if they're in a highway position, then he could be in some trouble there. He didn't have any rifle support, so that is something that they may want to look at for a future round. You saw Kenny S. I think he may have ran through the smoke expecting people to focus on the site, picked off Shazam and picked up the AWP. Had a close engagement. I think he was unlucky to miss that. If he gets that frag, then it, we may have seen a very different round there for G2. So that's certainly something for complexity to review. But the fact of the matter is that it's a 5-0 scoreline in favor of complexity. And uh, G2 needs to get on the board quickly. Indeed, indeed. can be tough, that CT side, sometimes, especially against a team that knows their cash. It was uh, funny when you know cash first came out. It was very CT sided, and then it switched all the way around to becoming a bit T sided. As teams learned how to better play against those CT rotations and set up set pieces and so on and so forth. Either way, we'll have G2 making the presence known on mid, very very close here from Shock. So he won't be anchoring that A bomb site. Instead, that'll be the job of Kenny S, who is alone with the orb, has the help of existence on rotation on highway. And Smith will be playing with body here on the B-bomb site. This is scary stuff. It looks like Complexity want to burst into that B-site. The setup will have to be key in doing damage for G2. That's a, look at that, that's a perfect pop flash. No warning, not bouncing off anything. I think body's lining up a flash going off the wall, actually. There is the flash, which will buy some time, but it hasn't flashed everybody. And he doesn't know how many people are there, I don't think. Molotovs and someone coming in. Chops commits to this, instantly traded. He's only got limited information for Body, who is blind once again. The flashbangs just keep coming, but Kenny S is here. He has Body's cross now, but from the vent position comes Stanislaw, and he just about gets the frag. Can he, can he do anything here? They're going to rotate back to where they know he's moved position towards this B-bomb site, and there's no reason they need to go and challenge into him when they can just get a free plant towards A. So Kenny now has a lot of decisions to make, or maybe just two, and it's either go for this or not. Stan will shut him down, and... It was a good round from Complexity. They were very, very confident sitting in there because it was awkward. Body played it so well. I mean, if we consider how long we were on Body's POV, how long he stayed alive, and him staying alive there is preventing Complexity from moving into the bomb site. Trivia, Stanislaw's name in Polish would be pronounced Stanisław. And I believe he is of Polish descent. 
is he not? Otherwise, I wouldn't say that. It must be true. <laughs> G2 on the pistols again. That was that that previous run was their first buy with like I'd say with proper utility, so their first full full buy. But alas, it was to no oh! avail. Okay, Smith, that's a very good start. It's a very good start. Dan enjoyed that one. He's a fan of the Deagle. He was in the air, James. He was airborne. He was, but they need a lot more than that. Four players still alive for complexity, and they start to cut the numbers of G2. Kenya's making an effort, and Shock's looking for something with his, his own Deagle. Almost taking Android out, and now it's existence versus three. Wow. Nothing doing. 7-0 complexity. This is a monstrous start, but it's not too late for G2. I mean, G2 could could uh, lead the round 8-7 at half time. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice, but they got a big fat zero. They were they were actually G2 were very close to being able to win that round. Like the timings just if like shocks if the second bullet connects from shocks, for example, on when hit this deagle spray, or if the T's are milliseconds slower, like you know half a second slower into the bomb site. Death's going for the peak in mid. He has yes. a forge born for it. So if anyone tried to cross, that's a very fast, um, very fast smoke from the CT side. And there's aggression now. G2 changing up the pace, but I think existence. I'm not sure. He may have just been seen crossing. But either way, complexity. No, that main has been compromised. So G2 are stopping the fast plays from complexity. We've got two. We've got aggressive smokes from both teams outside the B bomb site, and um, we have a takeoff main from G2. So complexity's initial plan, which has got him to the 7-0 scoreline has been stopped for now. Kenny is looking to see what he can do with this deep angle, and he may be able to get a flick on. Oh, wow. What Yay. is that? I don't even know how that works, but it does. And Yay's going to push forwards with it. Kenny S was the anchor on the bomb side. Smith tries to do what he can to slow things down, but this is an instant save. It might be from G2. They've lost the bomb site. They've got very limited ways to get back in unless Shocks can get a couple kills from this forward position. This is so difficult. The AWP is there in Shazam's hands. They have Molotovs, they got flashes, they got smokes, and new smoke just went down. What the hell can you do to get back in? Well, Shocks is pushing forwards. He'll get traded out, though. Body by the car, Smiths by the highway position. That smoke hasn't quite landed as the teeth may have liked, and there are frags to be had here for the CT side. Pre fired towards the forklift, and now Smith knows where Shazam is, who has the line. And as Smith tries to cross, Android maybe reading that will peek and take him out. 8 0 for complexity, looking comfortable. What is the ceiling of this team? I want to see that entry from Ye. Here it is. Wow. And from Kenny S's perspective, because we were on Kenny. It, that was very surprising. That was, yeah, being a play a, in the smoke to get the kill like that as it dissipates. That's a rough one. Damn. And that's, that frag probably changes the course of the round. Oh, yeah. Zero to eight. We have a tactical timeout from G2, and you can see the stress is rising. Yeah. They try, so they try to adjust. We've seen so many rounds where complexity have just played fast rounds while G2 are trying to set up. We had one where they have, they're in a boost position, and they have Kenya standing over an AWP along with his team. They're like, okay, I guess, I guess we're going to be here as this push comes in. And it's worked out fantastically well for complexity. G2 shut them down. They have the forward smoke towards B to stop pushes in that direction. They take main and complexity still went around and in, in the most frustrating fashion as well. If you go yeah. back to that that entry frag from Ye. Yeah, then there's like these rounds where it kind of looks like maybe you can win it, but really you're already in a terrible position, like having to retake onto the A-bomb site and so on when the team the other team has loads of nades. At that point, the round's already gone too far wrong. This might be too far gone. It's a nice double nade going to the white box position to catch a CT and it did catch existence somewhat. It'll take some licks of damage. That's at least the third time they've done that, which is good. Yeah. Because uh, it deters somebody from going there, at least early rounds. And one cool thing here for Complexity is they're building a very strong T-side. And G2 is where I expect to see the, the strongest performance. Again, as you know, in the past existence, would come up with all kinds of nonsense to deal with. And G2 have in the past won catch games via that T-side alone, but... Now we might get a good start from them. Shocks with a very, very fine angle there. Manages to get the kill somehow. That's an impressive shot. And that's a much needed early round advantage. I say early round. We're moving into the mid round. The minute mark has been hit. Complexity now taking, going for that delayed mid control. They may be committed to a B split here. A late take of main from existence. And that will have G2 with the gravita gravitational pull towards the B-bomb site. Body making his way in. Smith and Kenya slowly rotating as well. Uh, that's the last smoke for the CT side deployed as they try to stop this push. Shocks, does he have to flicks? Will it be a double peak? 30 seconds remain for complexity, starting to execute. 
could see Molotovs towards the headshot position, for example, but they're not really committing to anything just yet. Existence is still in main. 20 seconds now. Great flick from Shox, and he needs some help. Could be some flashes over the top from the CT's body. will get traded, and now there's 15 seconds to plant the bomb. We've got a crab walk with the bomb. Stereo frags from the CT's, and they get their first round on the board. Four players surviving. Very crucial as well. Yeah, and, and I wonder with complexity if you want to just mix up the pace now. It was a really slow round. Shocks managed to find a pick off here. That is a crazy shot. And then that slowed things right down for complexity. They were very predictable. At, at that point, G2 know how it works. You know, you're playing a 5v4. It's late round. T's often go for that delayed mid take. If you confirm whether it's going to be A or B, you get that push into lockers, a safe push to make. Boom, you know what's going to happen. Easy round for G2. Now, double orbs for G2, Kenius and Shocks on the orbs. A mix up here. And a fast attempt into middle is going to go awry as we see. Actually, frags traded back and forth. There's losing uh, Kenius towards the B bomb site. Complexity continue to pursue that white box position with high explosive grenades. Miss taking some damage from that. So they get a chunky, uh, chunky slice out of that this time. Again. With the mid information, shocks will be left in situ. Stanislaw is under the boost position with the bomb in mid, so complexity have to have an approach to mid in this situation. One minute, 10 on the clock, and existence starts to move in as Smith rotates out. No grenades on existence, and he'll fall back. And might only so much fighting they can do there. Slowly, complexity edge out, and maybe they move into an A split situation with this bomb. Stanislaw having a look, but again, he is the bomb carrier here, so. Their lurker in this 4v4 is towards the B bomb site. As you can, you saw, he didn't go, he didn't peek all the way. If there was a sniper, for example, at the back of A, he would not have been blind from that flash, and the bomb would have been lost. I can see complexity with I'm not really making too much noise since that early mid attempt. Going for that B push, it's like G2. I'm going to be trying to spot this out now, and they have the information. Rotation's not coming in just yet. Still not coming in. And Body has so much to do here. He's going to get caught from the side as the dive through the headshot position will be the end of him. And it's a 2v3 here Ooh. for complexity. Down to 15 there. This is going to be very hot, tough to hold this bomb site. Smith has had a massive impact in this situation. Another Molotov towards a default position. Death, good for one frag, but the Molotov will spread. And I've got Android versus two. Looking for a CT to peek him. And there is a fair argument for the CTs to push this position. He spots one on the site, goes for a fast peek, but he can't quite do it. Smith had a huge play there. Just as he was starting to move, he saw the leg of a player outside the B bomb site. He fell back down the ramp to set up for a, a flash position to flash for his teammate on the site. He flashed for his teammates left for two peeks, and he got two kills through the smoke as well, and almost wow. killed a third player crossing to the site itself. So. Smith did, he, he played huge there with the flashbang support. He slowed down the push for the T's. He let his teammate get a kill. Got two kills through the smoke. Almost killed a third person. He had enormous impact in that round. So that's two rounds now for G2. That's the you know worst case scenario avoided of that reset, which would just ruin the game probably for G2, especially in this like best of one situation. We're going to see a complexity now in a position where they really need a bomb plant if they lose this round. That's like a good way to be able to buy in the following rounds as they have just enough money to do so if, if they get a bomb plant. So you can see they're actually setting up for an... It looks like they want to go for a fairly quick A set piece. I'll just see if this will be grenades just to try to trigger reaction from G2 and then they can re-execute on the bomb site later. Looks like that might be the case here. But G2 are not overreacting at all. A flash towards B. And complexity will hear that as well. Do they think that the CTs know they have no lurker towards the B bomb site? Do they think the time is limited to execute into A because the CTs are probably rotating? Many questions to be answered as Kenyes goes for a flick, but he's blind, moving away from the fourth split position. Existence charging for the smoke with a flashbang, but the timing is off, and that is a free kill for the T's. Yeah, a lot of damage through the smoke there from Stan as well. This gets very, very tough now for G2 as they try to make this retake happen. These smokes are deadly. Their complexity have laid down. You can't really push those smokes just yet. And Shazam makes matters worse here for G2. So he takes down Body. Great positioning here from Forklift. Oh, that was close. Got to be very careful. Shocks, though, is ready for it. And that's the Orpagon for complexity, but there's still so many challenges left to be had here. Yeah, I think this is a save for G2. It was a two versus four, now two versus three, but they don't have position, they don't have time. 
Now, Complexity are doing really well with their grenades towards A. They're getting that smoke grenade down between the red box and the wall, which really makes it hard for the CTs to have a retake there. It's almost suicidal to go for it. You saw Existence making a play earlier on. I don't know if there was a... Uh, the way he was playing, I think he was running in almost backwards as well. So you have to assume that there was a flashbang timing here. You're going to see it again. So he's going in sideways. I guess there was supposed to be a flash behind his head. But um, we had a flash pop. I don't know if that was the one or if he was taking a gamble there. Either way, it didn't work out. And G2 have been reset. And let's not forget, if it wasn't for Smiths having two kills through the smoke in the round prior to that one, G2 may, may not even have the second round on the board. So as bad as it is, it could have, could have even been worse if not for those smoke kills. So complexity are all over this game of Counter-Strike. It is not even funny. French teams on cash looking like a myth for the moment. North American teams on cash with a UK cameo. Hashtag Brexit. Who the hell knows? What is the ceiling of this complexity gaming side? Those two changes, Shazam and Stanislaw added to that roster. Because of Stanislaw's history and uh, Shazam's maturing in his career, you know it was going to be significant, but you couldn't have guessed it might be this significant. And again, Complexity may be one of the last teams that uh, these teams would prepare for. So many big names in this tournament. It is a major after all, but Complexity are shocking people at the moment. And again, we will see during the course of this tournament what their ceiling is. But by no means is this game one. G2 pulling two AWPs out of the bag with the rest of their gear. So Android will aim above the arrow and that will be a smoke to cover the position for the CTs if they're on the site. And they can pop flash through this, as you can see, which makes it really hard to hold the site for the CTs. Very dangerous stuff here. But much more contested. These four positions working well. Kenny S goes close. Battle sniper. But it won't work out there. Death with that high position. The vantage point as the C4 is tossed across. Complexity in the madness. We'll find that moment of calm to control things. And set up this fortified defense on this A site. And G2 binding their time. They have struggled retaking this A bomb site, James. And what do you do now? An AWP and an M4A4. Not ideal for a trade strike situation. And that's the round. That is the round right there. Double figures for complexity. They move to 10. Well, G2 tried to hold on to an AWP, but there is absolutely nothing doing for G2 in this game so far. Damn, what are this complexity team capable of? How far are they going to go? Where is the ceiling? Uh, Where yeah. is the ceiling? They are putting a lot back into those colors of that complexity logo. It's been a while, but you love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. One of the oldest and most legendary of the sort of Counter-Strike orgs, brands. Been around forever. I'm sure Mr. Jason Lake is happy with these recent developments. And yes, Death getting some good shots off there. I think Death, Death has been a bit uh, under the weather. I was in the elevator, bumped into him. He said, don't come near me, you'll, you'll get sick. Too much too much handshake, <laughs> too much handshaking it's, yeah. and putting fingers in mouths. Because you, if you see that between between rounds, when they're a tactical timeout, people got their hands all over their mouths, all over their faces, man. That's just the bacteria bonanza. Stop yourselves. Keep your hand away from your mouth. Lots of nail biting going on, just getting all that dirt and crap in your mouth. I didn't recommend it. In the meantime, we have Complexity executing into the mid position. G2 have the AWP and not much else. Pots and pans. Shock's looking for an entry, but he's got to watch out for Def's pre-fire. Def and Shazam in position. How do they approach this situation? In the meantime, Kenyas has made his way through Squeaky Door. And uh, surely he's going to get picked off soon because he's running and Sanislaw should hear him. Oh. There is eventually a trade. Now what is the reaction from Complexity? That's kind of nice from Kenny. That's a that's a tough kill to get. But the USP knew he didn't have any time and he had to do it then. Oh, this is so awkward here. Will they move into shocks though? It really shocks is the last bastion here in this round for G2. He's got the support. Smith, my god, just pushing through the smoke, finding a headshot, lightening the load for shocks, but it's still quite the burden as Stanislaw gains information here. And this lurk play from him could be enormous as he looks to flank. And he will flank, and that is body dead. And they're going to go into Shox here. This oh. could be a problem. Shox, he is all about these 1v3s, but unfortunately for him and for G2, this will not be one of those rounds. He has got to be so triggered. But at the, the time where he moves and then he sees the player, 
because he's almost definitely getting that kill. And he probably sees himself winning the round, or as a 50-50, even in a one versus two in that situation. Yeah. So annoying, but here we are. 2-2-11. Two, two, Got to keep the spirits high. Nobody's eliminated for losing this game, but um, they won't consider it a loss just yet. Now the focus has to be four rounds for G2. They've got some utility here. They've got a good buy, all things considered. If we go back to their first buy in this round, it's pretty much the same or similar. Shock's lucky to get away with that one. Wow. I like this early round aggression from G2. CT aggression is super important on modern cash. And this map has fallen out of favor. I mean, this has barely been played this major, which is kind of crazy. Oh my god, this push from complexity just walking through into checkers. Two players there. That's dangerous here for G2. I don't know if Body has any info. Spots it now, though. Smith will come in, and it's been watched for by Ye. So perfect is Ye. And now Body is feeling the pressure. Has to smoke off the site and flash to keep himself safe. Another push comes in. And complexity are ready for almost everything, but not for shocks coming in from the back. Maybe he can give G2 a chance now. You see the awareness from Shox, not going back into mid, dropping a flash there in case someone's trying to trade, moving away, but Stanislaw's the one with the bomb and he's got all the information. He concealed his position the entire time. He's got the sound cues, two versus three, and he will quickly check that the bomb site is empty. Now Shox looking in mid, Kenny deep in a body towards a car position. It's open season, it can get the post plant situation going. There's a money for G2, but not much else. They still don't know what's going on, so uh, complexity. They will make sure no one's on the site. They've given a sound cues away now, which buys extra time for G2 to get back to this site. Only Stanislaw goes to the site itself. Got to be careful because he can be seen from this position, moving onto the site, the headshot position. They know an AWP is somewhere. Shock's taken down on the flank. Now we've got a two versus two. Android gets his bell rung, but he's still alive. They know where one of these two G2 players is. Stanislaw with a very tight angle. And now Kenny's got to try and avoid getting traded with the AWP, but Stanislaw's teammate's miles away. He's in mid. Why is he so far away? But he misses a shot anyway, Kenny. And it's another round in the bag for complexity. Ooh, that, that almost went very desperately wrong for complexity. We, we could see it. We see that the bomb site is completely empty, and it looks so good for complexity. Stanislaw had, but had, you know, but Stanislaw had no idea that it was so empty, and they spent all this time trying to nade it out and gives G2 so many opportunities to rotate back in after being mistaken about the rotation back to A. But still, really well played by Complexity. They are looking savage right now on this T side. And G2, I'm sure they have a good T side, but they need to get enough rounds here to be able to actually play it. And right now, if they aren't to get any more rounds, uh, losing the pistol round, that could just seal their fate. So they need to make sure that this one goes their way. And they've got a terrible... Terrible arsenal in this round to deal with these T's as they move in onto these bomb sites. Looking like Complexity are playing a very slow default at the moment. Maybe a delayed mid take in store, and from that you can build into pretty much anything. It seems like they're very wary this round of aggression from G2, and they neither team has seen anything yet, and there's been very little pressure from both teams. It's time to start hoarding complexity stickers. Or is it? The game is not, not over yet. Let's not get too excited. Smith's on a scout. Old Faithful towards the B bomb site. Shocks will be the first to see something. Now they know that mid is taken. But the complexity are walking into a crossfire and with the lurker taken out, maybe Shazam can trade that situation. Well, everything changing quickly. Smith with a scout kill. Three versus two though on the A bomb site. But Kenny hasn't been seen just yet. Trying to get multiple frags. The transfer is there for him. Sees the first player, the last player on the site. It's Android, 28 HP versus Body. Android, a uh, player held in high regard, and he's good for round number 13 for complexity, faking, drawing Body out of position and shooting him in the face. Two rounds for G2 on their CT side. That was such a big kill from Android. Wow, what a half. Again, cash can be very T-sided. I think that a lot of teams started to realize how to play that CT aggression to prevent these kinds of score lines. But this is one of the reasons why I think we see Cash out of favor in the pro scene. It, it feels, it can feel kind of unstable if you start off on that CT side and you don't get a good go of things. And now that's the position G2 are in. They have to summon all their experience, all the grit and determination in the world, Jays, because they can't, they can't lose any rounds. There is no margin for error. Yeah, forget that. Let's just focus on the pistol rounds. They need to win the pistol round. 
on the T side with Glocks. And that is, um, I mean, who knows? You can't really put too much faith into that situation. Some of it is hope. Smith's jump peeking. Keeping an eye on things. Now, other teams will, will just boost somebody there very quickly so they can just sit in that position. A fast boost on red let, lets you see a CT running next to the vent position if you can do it fast enough. So there is value in this, especially for those of you at home. Just a fast boost onto spools. From spools, rather, onto the box. Can be fruitful. And now G2 will cut the noise and move towards the A side. It's a retake situation for Complexity. Stanislaw with a kit, and he's playing passively towards B as well. So it's like a double retake for Complexity. And if it was a B play, you'd probably see that retake smoke. But towards A, who knows how he will use it. Yeah, there's the classic retake smoke you can put as well. Onto that A bomb site, which is really useful. We'll see if the plant goes into the open. The, op the open plant, yeah, so, th so the retake smoke that everyone t typically knows for A, does land on the spot where Kenny has just planted, and that's really important. But wow, death through the smoke. That's a big frag. That really makes things a bit easier here. Five versus four come for complexity as they start to move in. And you can see a smoke is thrown forwards, but not on the bomb itself, but on to the main position. Instead, forcing the T's out into the open here. But they are happy with that situation. They get to play with one another. And I think that's why, James, you tend to see the smoke go on the bomb instead, because the tease is very awkward for them to find engagements if the smoke is on the actual bomb. Yep. I know uh, Daps is a fan of smoke diffuse, especially on cash. And it just causes bedlam as well. Everybody dancing around. You can use your teammates to run distraction. And um, it's interesting because the T's are more inclined to shoot through the smoke than to shoot their opponents, which kind of leaves them more exposed. So it can be very problematic. G2 get the first task out of the way. And now it is anti-force by a territory. Death will have the scout in this round, the rest of the team on pistols. Generally, if you buy, as almost everybody does in the pistol round, then you need a kill in that pistol round to have the money for a scout. Speaking of kills, Android off to a good start now. He's the bait. You can see the CT's coming in, expecting the T's to focus on sandbags, trying to catch them looking elsewhere. There were three players there. Now there are two. The scout is still in tow, but no one who's still alive is tagged here for G2. Ooh. What is that? That is That's a lot dirty. more than a tag. That's dirty. He no longer has a jaw. Three versus three. G2 needs to make sure these guns are not retrievable by complexity and then probably come together and move into a site together. They've got two Molotovs and Shox has picked up a HE from a fallen brethren. So they may be good for a attempt at the A site here. This is scary right now. 3v3. You've got Death playing quad now with the scout. That's kind of ideal. If they walk in, which they might try to do, Okay, there's some warning for Death. Ooh, he gets a tag. What else can he get here? There's a deagle in play from Android. If he softens them up, that's just one deagle shot away from a frag. This is very scary right now. Death could do so much damage. He's burning, though. He's got to make a decision, and he'll go back through the flames. And I don't think he did enough damage here. Android lining up shots. That's a good one, but he's down to 16 now. Shox can just wait in that position. Just use his teammate to shoot Android if he gets close enough to compromise Shox. So Android, I don't think there's any way forwards and he will indeed get taken out. But that was a scary round for G2. Yeah, and even scarier with Existence not getting that kill. I mean, he has to get a kill there. He's not having the best of games currently. 3, 4, 15. So that has to change. Maybe it does. Sometimes you have a nightmare on one half and the second half is very different as we've seen in some games today already. But um, can't have many more scenarios like that. See how much... He got a pretty reasonable spray in there. And uh, I think it maybe landed one bullet. So that has to be the last time that happened because Complexity have 13 rounds. And that kind of situation can be enough to win or lose a game or even a match in these best of ones. A round, sorry, or a match. And it's good to see Complexity as well, you know, on a different map than Inferno. And to see them just so comfortable. That's that's really awesome to see. That's like one of the things with the, the best of ones is that you know you, you can often tend to see like for, for example with Tai Lu, you know, we we've, we've seen him on Inferno and Train basically, but mostly almost entirely for Inferno I think. And so it's good to see the competence across the map pool. Yeah, I suppose it was um in a previous major where Bigs the 
the focus on big was Inferno, essentially. I wouldn't say big's focus was, but the focus from other people on them was all about Inferno. Um, very different this time, of course. Bomb left in T-spawn, bomb collected by Kenny S. All right, then. We've got Kenny S on the MAC-10. He will be looking to farm. Kenny S is in Farming Simulator 2018. Android on the A side, but the rest of Complexity are not far away. They're not really engaging in mid per se, because the ranges are not favourable. Ah, oh, they were waiting for burst, and here they are. Existence with the Galil, clearing them up bit by bit, changing his position, trying to avoid the 1v1s, but he will eventually go down. However, that's okay, because um, he's buying time for his teammates, cutting down the numbers. And now Smith will move on to the A site on his own as they look for Shazam, who is in that mid position. Is it slightly more money for elimination than a bomb? D detonation defuse is 3,500. Elimination is 3,250. Uh, yeah, 3,250. Ah. So 250 more. Well, I guess he was due to get eliminated at some points. <coughs> well then, here we go. Shazam on the AWP. The rest of the team on M4s. Once again, we see a CC side lose the pistol and have limited utility on their first buy round. Again, very limited margin for error here for G2. This is a big one. Crash that economy of complexity. The utility for complexity is not amazing. Oh, Shazam's position is good, though. Will there be flashes as they move in? Or will it be a dry one? There is a forward Molotov towards Borg. And Shazam had a couple of chances there. He won't hit any shots, but he won't go down immediately after. Oh, okay. Well, that does change things. He stays out there. Another attempt, another go of it. He's still far enough shots. He was not connecting, but he is a problem. There are four flashbangs here for the T side. I'd love to see them use some as uh, they don't really have position. As you saw, there was a flash attempt there for the peak, but the flash flashed a teammate and not the CT. So don't quite know where that went. Four on four. Def looking for a late lurk in Squeaky. He needs to make sure no one is there. Is the door open or not? Kenny missing the shot. The door is open and no one's going to focus on his existence. is completely exposed there. And Def will take him down. And that's another one from Shazam. This is falling apart very quickly. The dream is collapsing. And Shox is alone. And one versus four. How many kills is he good for? There's a player on default. He's got so much to do. The smoke is down. The transfer is there. He can jump on the high ground. Oh, does he focus on the bomb? He's still being defused. Oh my god, Shox is going nuclear. He's got three kills. The deep deals out. Is, has he wasted enough time though? Oh, he has his one around. That's ridiculous, Shocks. How on earth have you done that? <laughs> oh my god, classic Shocks moment. Just diving on top of the container, knows exactly what he has to do at every stage of this clutch. Player into player, knows it has to be a transfer, knows he can't risk going for the taps. Straight onto the bomb plant, never loses focus in an incredibly chaotic situation. That has Shocks written all over it. Beautiful. Oh my god. How does he do this? This guy, I'm so glad he's back. Yeah, I'm so... I don't, I don't know, Android r going around the smoke, the the high ground has to be in your mind in that situation. But um, it's pretty tough around the smoke as well. But I feel like it's Chox has to be the one to creep around if he wants to kill the guy who's diffusing deep in default. But here we are. That's just, that's just shocks right there for you as well. Like, he's so scary to play against. That is a huge round from G2. An unlikely round. Man, and that breaks the money of complexity in the short term. But of course, they will quickly be moving towards max loss bonus. And they do have some dangerous weapons here. Android has an AK-47 and death with the scouts. Pushing out there onto the side. Android creeping around. He's got the AK. Ooh, big damage from Android. Oh my god. Two quick headshots looking for the third one as these players dart around. Oh man, they have no idea, it seems like. Now they absolutely know. And Android's presence, he spots another one running in. The Molotov comes in, but Android is still dangerous. His back is covered by a teammate. He is just staying out here. What a big threat he is in this round to G2. They're in so much trouble right now. Even though Def just has a scout, Android with that AK is a problem. Finally, though, Body will remove that problem but death we've seen him do some disgusting things with this scout that bomb still needs to get planted it's about to plant on the default oh you <laughs> cannot be serious death he was so close to a second kill there as well looking for a weapon he's picked up an ak-47 you oh my god moving around the forklift has he been seen by smith smith moving around this is ridiculous 
How are you doing that in a major? Why did he? I mean, okay. I mean, he didn't pick up the AK, which I was thinking maybe he would just because. So I just don't understand, Dick. It's you, element, you have an AK. It's the element of surprise. Yeah, but 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 it's a scout. You can't expect to make that shot ever. This is how. Oh no, that's the biggest tease. He's got a lovely face. But we <laughs> my God. Oh. You need to queue up that replay properly again for the next round because, oh my god. The, th the funny thing is, right, the scout is very accurate for no scopes. It almost always has been in, in different versions of Counter-Strike as well. If you play it enough, you can, con you can confidently headshot somebody from that position. There's no... I don't to, do that, to do that in a major is another thing entirely, but, I mean, if you play enough scout, you can just run around and no scope people from a, from a reasonable range. That is, that is absolutely mental. If you're, if, I'm telling you, if you're good enough, you can have confidence that you are probably going to land that shot. <laughs> Either way, oh, what, this is just madness. Right, G2. Complexity playing a slow round, giving everyone a, a breather from that crazy action we just saw. And maybe things will stabilize here now for Complexity. They're holding onto grenades very well so far. They've got three smokes and four incendiaries, and we're. We're at the 50 second mark. This is a very late take of middle coming in, and Death is ready to challenge it. Takes down existence. And there is a lot of lean here from Complexity towards this A bomb site with players, and G2 are starting to move much faster towards this B bomb site, which is being given up completely by Android. Uh, do they just want to play retake here? Because that is what they're going to have to do very soon. I think they're entirely prepared for it. They've got the smokes as well, but they may not have the personnel with Kenny performing in that mid position. Now they start to move in. Still three smokes on the complexity team. Android trying to shoot across, but he doesn't want to expose himself too much for the traces. Now, I fully expect if they choose to go for this, they, they do have a man disadvantage, but I expect the retake smokes to come in because they're basically, they're basically positioned for the retake. They would assume the bomb's planted for defense. And indeed, if you look at uh, Stanislaw, that's, yeah, that's going to bounce into the... There you go. The retake smokes around. That's going to force the T's forward. Now, Kenny has some room to play with, but of course, how can he have any idea? The T's Molotov from their position. The flashbang is in, but they're not committing just yet. Second flash, a third flash, and they haven't seen Smith just yet. Gets a frag regardless. Smith doesn't need to see anything to get some frags, and uh, they will get taken out. But you saw the intention from Complexity. Whew. This is uh, this is pretty crazy. Kenny catching two there on the rotation, denying the trade kill, that's, that is pretty huge. Especially if you can see the fact that he's able to help out at the end there. And the fact that Smith gets a kill fully blind, which is obviously credit to just having good crosshair placement before the flash comes in, and then you can just hold mouse one and hope for the best, works out. Complexity, they're getting into some territory here where things are starting to get a bit worrisome because G2 have, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say smoothly, been taking rounds. I mean, it's been pretty traumatic in many senses, but they they still have some margin for error. You know, Complexity can you know, win, you know, one round, and even if G2 want to play for overtime, it doesn't really matter at this point. If G2 are gaining this momentum as they are, and it continues, Complexity have to be worried. We know how dangerous these French players can be. So it was Team Spirit versus Prostor. I think at the minors, maybe, where they were doing retake smokes like that on the pistol round and so on and so forth, and I made a video about it, but the T-side smokes were pretty cool as well, and Molotov, so... Definitely look up that video, Prostor, aka Pro 100. Now we have an execute from G2 into the B-bomb site. The smoke needs to dissipate on the site itself. And they've got the Molotov to clear out part of the site, but only half of it. And these are dangerous pistols to deal with as well. And that smoke grenade is a problem. And now G2 are in no man's land because they can't really push the site with that smoke up. So they've got issues here. They've lost three players now. This is turning into a disaster. Existence gets his bell rung. And now we've got a flank coming in also. How on earth do they retrieve this? Of course, it's going to be down to Shocks. Two versus three. Realizes a flank is there. Shocks so good of an AK. 35 seconds remaining. Existence is carrying the bomb. If he goes down, where he goes down could be an issue. Shocks looking for more flanks, trying to identify where these players are, but they don't have the time really to do this. Death on the high ground with the Desert Eagle now, and Shocks is going to take him out as well. Existence moving forward. 20 seconds. Sanislaw is going to have a close quarters advantage. The pistol straight in the face now. 14 seconds, he can hear Shock. Shock's just got to dance with him. He's looking for the headshot. Stannis, well, he needs two, though, and he finds them with the P250. Complexity shut it down. Massive play from Stan right there at the end. That is huge as well. You know, winning that fight against Shock's is never going to be an easy one. But Shazam, 
what a round to come alive with one Deeks. That is beautiful stuff. Wow. So much damage. So much awkward. So much in the way of awkward situations to deal with for G2. And now, you know, losing a round like that just absolutely sucks. And their economy is so unstable despite winning round after round. I mean, we've seen how close they've been. G2 now on two CZs. And that is to have utility. And so we'll see a fast play, seemingly. Or will we? Looks like G2 will take over the lockers area in A main. And they do need to get a lot of value from this utility. There's not much of it. The CZs will want to move first. Going to get the run boost there. Ooh, Death saw a foot. And that is good for information. Preemptively shooting through the door there, expecting the push to come in. A flash of leg, but he does not want to get his wallets out. Death, Shockstoke may take all his money away, creeping past a forklift position, but he doesn't know what lies on highway, for example, or the car area. He has an angle advantage on the car, sees no one's there for now. But you don't know how things will change. He's waiting for Death to reposition. Surely it's inevitable. There it is, straight in the face. Can't get a 2k though. Will they commit behind this? The smokes are starting to fly in. Shazam has a look and now he's blind. Very, very tight stuff here. Oh, that's a bad miss there from Stanislaw. That could have been a good delay on the bomb plant. We'll have to see though if Ye can do that job. He's, ooh, was he spotted? I think he may have been spotted there from the quad position. We'll have to see. Looking for those heads here. Ye in a very dangerous spot. So 3v4 here, he doesn't want to go down too early. Throws the flash forward for Stan. He's going to close the distance onto existence. The transfer comes in. It's not good though. Yay, can he finish things off here? Losing Android. No, Kenny will deny him. And G2 will just about, with the two CZs and three AKs, scrap together the round. And that's a big one. That is that is very pivotal because complexity. Sure, they won that surprise round, but their money sucks right now. The struggle for G2 right now is real. Now, we're not really ones to to call out a player on the server, but it, but it has to be noted that as far as the fracking power goes, it's basically been 4v5 the entire match as far as G2 is concerned. Obviously, someone like Existence offers a lot more than that, helps his team get into position and so on with the grenades and the strategy, but... This is like really hard for them. He, I mean, he, they're out. They're on the T side. They've got the AKs. He still only has six kills in this entire match, and that and that is an issue. And of course, that requires a superhuman effort from Shocks, um, and he's delivering in that regard for the time being. Currently, 21 kills for him, leading the server along with Stanislaw, who is leading by example. And that's the thing. There's still there's still Counter Strike to be played, and it's never too late to turn up. And he can get the impact frags and help take things over the line here. And it's been like some of the post plant situations have have been really uh, scary for G2. Completely exposed to the squeaky door position, and just exposed on the on the boxes near the red the red container. Multiple rounds, but here they are on another anti eco and complexity. They simply seem uh, a better prepared team. They've got things up their sleeves like that smoke you saw near nice. the headshot position. Body taken down early by the one really dangerous gun here for complexity. Well, you say that, but there's three CZs and a Deagle, so it's uh, like, and now with a 5v4 and an ability to, to trade out with those CZs, which are very fast moving, things do get a bit awkward. G2 have middle, but I don't think Complexity care too much about that. And, you know, losing body to that surprise orb, it's a big deal. And I was wondering if they would go for it, because Stan had, everyone in this team had around 2k dollars, but Stan had, I think, 6,500 or something. So this, re this buy really works out for Complexity. And Shocks now. Oh, the 1v1. Important stuff. Able to best Ye there. Is spotted out on the door. What is the read from Complexity, though? Shocks will continue to try and create pressure towards this A site and open it up. Oh, Death is going to go in. Oh, my goodness. Existence almost going down there. That was so close, and there's a lot more to do. Shazam still alive with AWP. And that can be collected because Android, Astan, and Stanislaw are in that same car position. We know Stanislaw can AWP. Can Android, though? Are they going to commit to this? That AWP is valuable. Smoking off the main position. Now Stanislaw's invested, but Android can still retreat if something goes wrong. He sees the shadow and down goes. Look at Stereo Frag. Suddenly it's Shocks again in a one versus two. If he goes to his right Shocks, his shadow will be seen by Android. Goes to the left and takes out the kill. Double figures for G2. So scary. Every single round. The, it, the thing is, one, well, one of the big deal, the biggest deals here is that it's so fortunate that Shox is so cons just left alive that he's last, last man. so consistently because Shox is one of the best players in the game at clutching. He's one of the best players. You give him a box, you give him some cover to work with, 
And not only is, are his reactions incredible, his mechanics incredible, but he understands how to play these situations on jiggles, on fakes, on mind games perfectly. And that is why he's so incredible in the clutches. This is a fast boost I was talking about in the pistol round. So again, you, they know complexity on the pistols, and that gives them a lot of information towards mid. You can boost the CT up to go towards the vents, which SK used to do a long time ago on some rounds, but that does require a lot more time. So fast boost there, you know no one's close left with a CZ or something like that. Very crucial information. Complexity Pat's looking for a, a burst. It, it can be common that, you know, as G2 showed previously, when they went for in an anti-eco, or what they thought might be an anti-eco, they went for that quick push, everybody quickly through middle. You can get a, a five-man peak or five-man trade situation when they uh, close into white box, but you can see that Jesus just walked into the bomb side here. So at this point, your know, complexity's gamble didn't really pay off, unfortunately, and there's only so much you can really do with the USPs. It's all about just trying to gamble stack and have some funky setups, and it uh, didn't work out. And uh, G2, they closed the distance more and more and more here. Complexity, they've got to be starting to sweat as G2 they just keep making it happen. Round French after teams rounds. on cash, Dan. I told you, French teams on cash. It was never in doubt. It is still in doubt, though. You've got to be careful. Complexity back at it with a full bite. There's no AWP, but they'll have full utility. And there's actually no diffuse kit. That could come back to bite them. We'll have to see. French teams on cash, man. Just waiting for the AKs. Four plays moving towards the B bomb site, trying to catch Ooh. the teams off guard. Smith's up there. And there's no trade. Finally, can he enter trade with the AWP? And body with a crouch peak with the AK-47. Quite a dab hand with an AK as well. Shazam trying to spot players crossing to the site. And the bomb has not made it over just yet. Again, we've got one smoke grenade for complexity. And they can smoke that position if they go for the normal plant. Let's see. They have to pick the right time. And body's waiting a lot. The smoke's disappearing and he hasn't crossed. He's got the bomb and he's got 12 HP. What do they choose to do? Do they try to boost out of the vents maybe? Because Ye will surely shut them down. And if they do do that, who goes? Do they go with the bomb? And if they do, who go who carries the bomb? Body's got 12 HP. So many issues now for G2 as they slow things down. Body does have another smoke though. He can re-smoke this position. Are they even sure at this point that the bomb site is clear? Now, Shox is in a position where he could rotate and the CTs don't know this. They could still go towards a G2. They're probably not going to, but Complexity don't know that. If G2 wait longer, do Complexity start to move someone towards A? For now, the answer is no. And Def has a cross and they're going to go dry, it seems. Oh, Nick starts to come in. There's the jump, make it safe. And that is the bomb across onto the site there. Shox will plant it safely. And once again, very fortunate that Shox is the guy that didn't get absolutely annihilated by that one HE at the beginning of the round that seemed to decimate the rest of his team and maybe it'll come down to him again. We'll have to see complexity to have time here and only three flashbangs at this point. And in those flashbangs go. And here it is, combine the push. Ye wins the battle in checkers. Kenny S now dealing with that. Shocks goes down on the bomb site. It's up to Kenny S now. 46 HP, the pressure's on, the defuse comes in. There is no kit, it's still being held. Five seconds to go and Kenny can't defeat Ye. And so it will be safe. Complexity move to 15. There it is, match point. G2 have plenty of money. Now, if G2 win this round, Complexity have practically no money and G2 will only be three rounds behind. So this is, it, it's entirely plausible that G2 take this to overtime. This is a big opportunity for them again. They have to focus on that. Never mind that they lost the round. Never mind that it's match point. One round at a time, one round four times. That has to be the focus for G2. They have a full buy apart from body on a Galil. Everybody else is all good in the hood, but maybe it's Complexity's hood. We'll soon find out. Molotov towards the boost position. And it seems G2 will start slow. Deep breath here for G2. Full nades at least. You've got to ask yourself, you know, what do you, they think is their best chance to win a round? Because they need to crush that economy of complexity. No foot can go wrong at this point for G2 complexity they need to hold their nerve as a team that is not as experienced at this level of CS at a major as well of all things closing is another story entirely and that's obviously what they are going to be focusing on right here delayed mid take oh but look at this we've got three men towards the white box maybe complexity want to make a fight of this Shazam considering a peek, maybe waiting for a flash. I think that might have been a team flash, but Stanislaw still having a look, but not over committing. 
not showing to a player who is in Kenny's position. Meanwhile, we've got tees towards that uh, vent area. Now, if they jump on the box, their heads will be exposed. The CTs know that. They can be peaked from Z Connector or from Stanislaw's position. But he'll be forced away now into the smoke, into the ether. Four players on the A site for these CTs. And look at this split from G2. They've got numbers all over the place. It's going to be a three prompt assault, but there's a crossfire for the CTs. They've got players on a high ground in two directions, and this just might be enough. Shocks with three HP and a one versus four with 15 seconds. Not this time. 16 to 11. Complexity with the upset, it has to be said, over G2. Yeah, it was always a hard match to call, so little sample size really for both teams. Uh, and complexity, as you say, we don't know how far they can go, and they can continue to show that they've got the goods here. A well-rounded game brought to G2, and my god, so many clutches from Shocks to keep G2 in this one. But complexity, they started strong, and they ended strong. You've got to respect them. But G2, they're not done just yet, and I can't wait to see what else they have to bring in this tournament. Yeah, G2 started 0-8 down had a 2-13 half in the first half so they they made the best of it they could but um i mean who knows what would have been possible if they had five people fragging on the server i think that has to be a big focus existence finishes 7 for 24 on the scoreboard but congratulations to complexity they continue to surprise they continue to impress and they continue to restore that heritage of the complexity brand as well yeah, one thing for me I wonder, and I wonder if the desk will talk about it, is the CT side of G2 and the setups. But, because uh, it's one of those things where we had Kenny S sort of alone there. You know, typically evolved G2 or, you know, one thing that you'd really, we would see highlights of constantly is shocks. Shocks playing those boxes, playing the core position, being very difficult to stop. And, you know, there it was given up time and again. We saw so many rounds where Abe, Abe almost saw it was lost and you have a hopeless retake again and again. That's got to be a focus for them moving forwards. Freya is with Complexity in the gaming room. Eventually. I'm fine. Yes, I am here with Complexity, the winning side. I'm joined by Shazam and Stan, who's just packing up his stuff casually. Guys, that was an incredible game. You haven't faced you 2 for a while. How did you prepare for this one, Stan? Stop. Preparation was tough. Like you said, we haven't faced them in a while. And also, they haven't really played any matches, so we have no, we had no idea what to expect. Um, they've kind of just been flying under the radar. They had a lot of new stuff, so it was just us relying on our own game. Yeah, because you guys, this was the first time you didn't play Inferno for this whole tournament. Did you have anything prepared up your sleeves for Cash? Um, yeah, actually, you know, we were hoping to play a different map this tournament finally and to show that, you know, we're not just a one map wonder. So, you know, I'm glad we, we came up big on Cash. Yeah. I just want to talk about that T side. That was phenomenal. You guys just looked super aggressive going everywhere as a unit. Was that kind of the play style you were looking to do? It's for me, it's kind of tough to explain, but it's just kind of how I feel on the day. So today, I guess I was feeling kind of everyone just go together and make sure we trade the kills and seem to work out. So going on to that CT side, they kind of nearly caught up with you guys there. What do you think went wrong, Sam? Uh, when we threw that like 1v4 clutch for Shoxy, that was a big turning point for them. Uh, that's entirely on me. I dropped like a dumb smoke by accident and he kind of used it to his advantage and like props to him. Uh, it took us a little bit to regain ourselves, but once we did, you know, it was smooth sailing. Yeah, I just want to talk about one round that you went absolutely crazy. I think it was round 22 with the with the Deagle, uh, where you just, they were going on to B-side and you just shut them down. What was that like? What was the feeling when you managed to do that? I mean, when I, I think I killed Kenny first and I just knew I was feeling it, so I kept taking shots, but I did overextend there too. So it was like lucky that Peter clutched that 1v2. Yeah, was there any point where you just felt that momentum surmounting and you just knew you were going to close it out? Yeah, we knew we would close it out considering how good our T half was and the round we lost, which was the 1v4, like Shaz said, should never have lost. So we knew as long as we just get another gun round in, eventually we should close it out. So you guys are now 2-0. You only have to get one more win to go to Wembley. How would that feel to make it to that stage? I mean, we're all super excited and we really want it, but it's still not over. You know, we still have to win another match, but it'd be really fun to play in front of the UK crowd and hopefully have the crowd with us, with Rory being a native, so. Exactly, yeah. Was there anything you'd like to say to the fans at home just before we head to the desk? Just continue supporting us. Thanks so much. It means a lot to know, like, everyone just has our back, so thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations again on that win. We're going to head back over to the analyst desk. It really has been quite the journey for Complexity. They've been sat in the doldrums of North America trying to make a name for themselves. And indeed, this org has come out with a little bit of a legacy performance here in London 
uh, house name in Counter-Strike, and they are hitting hard against some of the legends of the game. G2 dispatched of by Complexity. We even got to see some of that legendary Counter-Strike from Shox. I mean, a 1v4. Shaz says he dropped a dumb smoke, but sometimes Shox is just going to win a round he shouldn't. Yeah, and that was definitely the case to keep them in the game here. Look, G2 in this matchup made some very poor decisions, but I want to give props to Complexity, obviously, yeah. for a fantastic performance, but this wasn't a normal game, right? This was one where, you know, this is the type of map where we talk about how important mid control is, you know, getting mid control, being able to do fake, setting the tone, setting up the defaults. They were just executing onto bomb sites time and time again on their T half. Yeah, Brett, if you want your to eyes lit up. As soon as you <laughs> said this wasn't a normal game, you're like, that's it. <laughs> well, if you want to learn how to play cash, do not watch this demo. I said they just went for like dry pushes on yes. 2A, yeah. and they just went for the trades. He actually, he actually said it himself, Stanislav. It's crazy though that he has said that, oh, it's just how I feel on the day. That's not really a game plan, and it was difficult to come up with a game plan because like we stated on the desk, we don't really know what G2 had to offer, and to me they had to offer terrible decision making on their CT side. There is some of the worst decision making from them as a unit that I've seen in a while. They're po posting players up in untradeable positions. Mid's not being taken at all, yet they still have two people watching it. Like in the early package that highlights, you see Kenny S and Existence standing next to each other on the boost position. Obviously, the executes come in before they could boost the player up like they wanted to. But in that situation, when that execute comes in, one player needs to jump out and sacrifice himself and do as much damage as he can for the other. Then there's certain rounds where I can think of the Smiths round where it was a 2v1 situation they got it down to. It was a safe plant. They still win the round, but Smiths opts to tap the bomb. It's the, let me reiterate, it's a safe plant, and he steps wide and potentially gives it a 1v1 situation. So, so many of those situations for uh, G2. I, I see it on cash. You have to decide if you're going to go for the retakes on A or if you're going to go for, or you're actually going to stack the site and play for the trades. And it sure. felt like G2 tried to do a bit of both. Sometimes it felt like they fell off the site and the smokes came in and they just tried to push through them and they just got traded out instead of actually playing on the site or waiting for their, their rotation from B. Almost like they kind of got their wires crossed. It wasn't one, it wasn't the other. It, it was a strange hybrid. Um, and actually, you, you you have got some criticisms for complexity as well? Or no, no, called? this is for G2. Oh, it but is? This is based off of exactly what Threat was saying there. This was an A round where they had no bodies on that A bomb site. Right. And existence goes to push in as the execute's happening. But it looks like either the teammates didn't get the communication or someone just forgot to throw a flash. So here we're going to see it. This is just one of these executes onto a bomb site. There was a couple of these coming out from complexity. Right now, you can see that there are no one on the a bomb site. They're in a position to play a 5v5 retake with a lot of utility. Now, for some reason, existence fork. goes to himself. Yeah, but look at this. I'm just going to run through the smoke, dry. No flashes in. Okay, now I'm dead. Right? So the guy at fork wasn't in any danger. He could hide in the smoke like you saw him do, or he could push back down highway. At this point, Existence has probably thought Kenny needs my help, but it hasn't actually been the case. So he's given up his life there, and now it's a 4v5 post-plant situation. Nowhere near as winnable for the CT side. Yeah, Existence actually, he had, a, he had a really tough game. Seven frags at the end of that one. And I mean, th there was a, a, a window by which G2 could have forged a comeback. Shoxi did bring that did momentum to the team. He did everything he could. And then you just see this, the, the rounds are starting to accumulate. Complexity are feeling the pressure. If you did have another fragger, if you had another 13 frags across those next couple of rounds, you've got yourself a competitive game. G2, though, they do look shaken by this. We saw them pick up one win, now one loss. What's What are expectations going forward throughout for, for this G2 roster? Are, they, are these easy to fix like mistakes could they spend a couple of evenings in that strat room after their games and, and come out with three wins well there's two main problems obviously the existence in the, has to step us up his yeah. individual performance and also i'm not really that impressed with his in-game like mid-round calls and also his setups as uh, the clip chat just sh uh, showed us when he's just running through the smoke there's, there seems like there's no communication there and that was one of the things that he was famous for before, like having good executes, the team play was really crisp. Mid-round Yeah, as well. exactly, but really good mid-round calls. If yeah. we do some Counter-Strike maths here, though, boys, we can solve this one. Oh, God. You, you ready for some yeah, Counter-Strike maths? Here it comes. G2 merely beat uh, Hellraisers to kick off the tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, th so that means, oh, okay, maybe G2 are pretty good because we thought Hellraiser are okay. But then Hellraisers struggled to beat Cloud9. And we know that Cloud9 got absolutely slammed yesterday in a game against Vega. So those three are the bottom three teams of the tournament by my Counter-Strike maths. Ah, Counter-Strike maths. It never fails. Never fails. It always works. Slash always fails. I mean, it's one of those things. Um, but we do, of course, have none other than the games coming up. I want to quickly remind you of what they are. There's more Counter-Strike for you to indulge in this evening. In fact, two more games, and they're some of the biggest of the evening. Breathe this in. Na'Vi 
versus FaZe Clan. You get to see NIP versus Team Liquid and Mouse MIBR. There's three games, counting is hard, and we're just talking about maths. Uh, NIB, NIP versus Team Liquid will be our next one, and we get to see that battle for that two wins. Team Liquid, they are poised to make a near seamless run so far here in the Face It Major, undefeated in the Challenger, and looking to go 2-0. Before we go, though, a reminder, epics.gg. Check it out. Grab it on your phone. Grab it on the web. And you can compare, trade, and all of that good stuff, your favorite CSGO stars. After the break, NIP Team Liquid coming up.